And I want to bring in a guest today to talk for a few minutes about the St. Louis Cardinals, Derek Gould. Derek, thank you so much for joining me, my friend. I really appreciate it. Happy to be here. Thank you very much for, uh, for the invitation. Of course. I'm happy to have you. Let's talk about this Cardinals team and, and what they're doing right now. And I want to start with, with Nolan Arenado because I love what he's doing. And it seemed like last year he comes over and the knock is, well, Nolan can't hit away from Coors Field. That, you know, the, the signing, whatever. They, he, he's not going to be as good. He was good last year. And this year, it seems like he's even on another planet. How cool is it watching him up close and personal right now? Yeah, for a long time there, I, I would make the argument that he was the best all-around player in the National League. I mean, you think about what he does defensively and then what he does in the middle of the order there with the Colorado Rockies. And now you see kind of all those parts of his game coming together. I mean, they, they, they had a, so much of it last year. He was He's obviously one of the best defenders at his position, um, maybe ever to play third base, certainly of his generation. Um, but the offense last year, you know, he, he was pretty critical of, of what he did. He was frustrated by his batting average. Um, he thought there were some times where, you know, he let some games kind of get away from him, some opportunities, um, you know, to drive in runs. And yet there he was, you know, the first guy to have 100 RBIs for the Cardinals since, uh, well, you know, in more than eight seasons. I mean, it had been forever since they had a guy just 100 RBIs. And he did provide that for them. This offseason, he really wanted to work on, you know, he felt he could do better against fastballs, do better against like high velocity do some more damage um, with that. You know, he, he is using one of those puck bats where it's a counterbalance bat. Oh, um, yeah. He's been that in spring training. Um, he and Paul Goldschmidt, they went, along with Matt Carpenter, to the uh, to the baseball lab there in Baton Rouge um, that's right across the street from the Marucci, and they worked with, like, kind of having a bat designed for their swing, um, and he's been using that. Um, and to go with all the work he did this offseason, and you, then you're just seeing that pay off. You're seeing rewards. I mean, he is a feared hitter now. Um, he always had the reputation, always had the numbers, um, but you can see what he can do, you know, almost like to carry a lineup if he gets hot. Um, he had the two-run homer there in Miami to win a game and was so thrilled. He Like, as he got to first base, he turned around and started pointing to the family and friends that he had there because <laughs> he said uh, he said he's never given them a show like that. He's always gone to Miami and not hit all that well. So he was thrilled to do that. Um, I think you're also seeing a guy that just really isn't enjoying himself. Um, you know, he uh, he and Paul Goldschmidt. Paul Goldschmidt talked a lot about that that first year with the Cardinals that he had. You know, there's there's an adjustment when you come from the only team you know to a new team, mm -hmm. um, a new team like the Cardinals, where they talk about playing in front of that atmosphere. But also you have to adjust to playing in front of those expectations. And, and that's something that, you know, he, he relished, he wanted, he sought, and now you can see him enjoying. I, I think we can officially say this year that the, the Coors Field effect is, is no longer. I, I don't think that's a problem for him, huh? Yeah, no, I mean, you think about, I, I get that it's like an easy storyline to do, right? Okay, you play a mile above sea level. I think it's a lazy storyline is what it is. It is. It, you're right. It is. What 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 happens is, and you, you'll know this well, is, right, okay, he's a right-handed batter playing in the NL West. How come we don't talk about all the ballparks that he had to play so many road games? <laughs> Good point. And the pitching staffs that he went up against. I mean, it's not like, you know, I'm talking to you here from San Francisco. It's not like this ballpark is particularly pleasant to right-handed hitters. And so right-handed hitters come in from, you know, they play for the Rockies, and here they have to deal with this, or they have to deal with Petco. Or they have to deal, you know, with the Dodger pitching staff more often than not. I mean, not everywhere is Coors Field. Yeah, they play, you know, half their games there. And it's not just about the home runs there. It's also just the wide open space of the outfield and the hits that, you know, that fall in there. But, you know, they have to go to some of the places that are just rigorous to hit. And they have to face some of these pitching staffs who through the years are rigorous to hit against. So, if we're going to talk about Coors Field, we also have to take into account all those road games and all those games against the division foes where it can be difficult on a right-handed hitter. Well, one of those stadiums is, is where you are right now, San Francisco, like you said. I actually just had Hunter Pence on the show yesterday, and we talked mm -hmm. about being a right-handed hitter at or or Oracle Park now. He said mm -hmm. you, you can't hit a ball to right field, so that's a good point. There's a lot of parks in that division that are tough to hit in. Let's talk about that series real quick, the Cardinals yeah. at the Giants. One, I'm really excited about this series. Two really good teams, but I think a little more than that. I don't want to say it's a important series, super important. Obviously, it's the beginning of May. I think this series will tell us a lot about 
the Cardinals team and where they are because it's kind of like, what is this team? Are, are they going to hit? Is it just because of Arenado? Is Gold, Goldschmidt's turning it around now? What can this team be and how excited are you and this team for this series? Yeah, I think it's a good kind of probably, you know, a, a, an early chance to measure themselves against a team that won 100 games, um, a team that they've drawn some inspiration from, let's be honest. You know, when the Cardinals talk about some of the things they want to do lineup wise, whether it's, you know, the matchups for when Albert Pujols is the designated hitter mm -hmm. or when Corey Dickerson is the designated hitter, you know, a lot of that they're drawing from the uh, the line changes that the Giants do. Um, if you if you permit me the hockey term, yeah, um, they go with the better matchups. They they really dig deep into those matchups and then make those moves. Um, the Cardinals want to draw information from that. Uh, first year manager Oliver Marmol has cited the Giants directly for what they saw them do last year to maximize their offensive potential. Um, this series comes at an interesting time for the Cardinals because they have adjusted their lineup. We talked about Nolan Arenado. He'd been cleanup hitter every game he'd played mm -hmm. until the last game in Kansas City and how long that la look lasts and what that means for Tyler O'Neill because Tyler O'Neill last year when the offense took off and they you know got going and they they had their best stretch and of course that was typified by the 17 game winning streak um, but when the offense was really rolling it was with Paul Goldschmidt second Tyler O'Neill third and Arnauto cleanup well now they've moved Tyler O'Neill down a little bit maybe alleviate some of that pressure take him out of that spot in between those two guys see if he can catch fire a little bit um, he did in the one game, how long does this look of the lineup last? And they do this just as they're arriving in San Francisco. So while it's a measure of how well they do against another team that aims to contend this year, a little bit like the series that they had most recently against the Mets, and they have another one coming up against the Mets that could have some fireworks in it, of course, because of the sort of residual bru the, the leftover bruises from the most recent meeting. Um, this weekend comes at a time when they're trying to find some – let's say chemistry, something to kind of ignite the entire lineup. And it does so against the Giants team. So it's really twofold for the Cardinals, what they want to see from themselves, but also what they want to see from themselves against a team like that. Yeah. Look, I want to talk about Pujols coming back. This, um, uh, this is the last ride with the big three, Wainwright, Yachty, and Pujols. How cool has it been being around this team with specifically Pujols back and those three being back together? And how much does it mean to the rest of the team? Well, it's a lot. I mean, you think about, you know, Nolan Arenado the day that uh, Elber Pujols was let loose from the Angels where he came back on the Zoom and said, hey, I just want to send a message real quick. And he, he spoke to Pujols through the press conference there. He said, uh, you know, Albert was his favorite player and that he knew that he would find a place for him. Um, well, now, you know, I talked with uh, Nolan during spring training and he said, you know, it's just kind of surreal for him to look across the clubhouse and see five. You know, it was this, it was, it was, <laughs> he goes, it's hard to believe I'm wearing the birds on the bat, but now I'm wearing birds on the bat with Albert Pujols. Um, there's a lot of that, a lot of double takes going on when some of the young players look over and see Yadier Molina and Albert Pujols talking as if they'd never been apart for 11 years. So, or, or 10 years as it was, um, you know, it, it's brought back a wave of nostalgia. It's brought back a wave of memories. It's also brought a lot of experience and a lot of conversation into the clubhouse. You know, Albert was a legend in St. Louis and now a legend walks among them and yeah. takes swings with them and talks with them in the batting cage. Um, it's, a, it's a big deal. Um, also, you know, I think it, it allows him to have, you know, he came back in 2019 with the Angels and talked a lot about how emotional that was for him, um, what that meant for him to be back in St. Louis and to be celebrated like he was an ovation every time he came to the plate, obviously the home run that he hit and then got a standing ovation as a visiting player. Um, now, you know, you get the sense that he's, he's getting a chance to kind of close his career the way he wants to, the choice he has while taking a run at possibly hitting 700 homers and to do it with one of his closest friends in Yadier Molina. So there is a lot of excitement. There is a little thrill on him around it they are very clear that this is not the nostalgia tour um that they do <laughs> want to win together now um but you know that you can't argue you can't look past the benefit of kind of allowing them to revisit their, yep. their great times together and the memories yeah uh, it is cool to see this team all together and they're also really really good while this is all going on so it's a really cool thing to see and you get to be right there in front of it and see it all happening so uh have fun watching it the rest of the year. Derek, thank you so much for joining me. I, I really appreciate it.
Oh, it was a pleasure. Great, great to chat with you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Of course, you as well. Thanks for watching. If you love flipping bats, swinging 3 0, or just talking ball, join us. Call us at 213 537 9339 with your questions. We have a weekly guest and we have a lot of fun, so hit that subscribe button.